Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome to another YouTube music production video. And in today's video, we're gonna be learning how I cut up breaks like this. So we're just gonna jump right into it and I have a kick and snare here and it's just sequenced like a basic two-step drum and bass beat. And I'll solo it for you guys here so you can hear it on its own. So my two favorite breaks that I like to use to layer over a break are the Hot Pants and the Lynn Collins break. The Lynn Collins break is also known as the Think break. So I'm just going to jump over to my breaks here and load a fresh copy of the Hot Pants break. I have it here already cut up as a recycled file. That's any file with an RX2 file. It just means that it's pre-cut already. So all you have to do is right click and slice to a new MIDI track. And then when it asks you to create one slice per rec slice, then we click OK. And then it actually s applies the break across the bar. So you have the sequence here. And I'll just play it on solo for you guys. Now, right now, I can just play this with the kick and snare, and it should sound pretty good. But to really finesse this break with the hot pants, I like to remove any redundant parts, such as the kick and snare of the hot pants. I don't need that. Really what I'm using the hot pants for is for that groove, that shuffle in those shakers. So you'll notice there's a kick playing here. There's a snare here. So we don't need those playing because we just really want the kicks and snares of my drum beat to stand out. So you don't want the kicks and snares from the hot pants to really confuse the break. So what I'm gonna do first is switch the grid to the eighth note view so we can see things a little more clearly. So my first hit here is a kick and I wanna replace that with the next eighth note which is the hi-hat here, right? So we just move the note two notes up now it's playing that hi-hat or it's like a tambourine we don't go here because that's more like a ghost note and we want to keep the ghost notes where they should be which is in between the eighth note position so we're just going to move this guy here and likewise with the snare we want to move the snare to the next eighth note which would be slice seven now there's one more kick here so I'm gonna move that to the next eighth note, which now the next eighth note is a snare. So you could also go back an eighth note and use this. As long as it's playing one of the hi-hat or tambourines that's on the eighth note positions, you're good, right? Then here's another snare. So I'm gonna, there we go. There's a little kick here. So I wanna remove, remove that. I wanna keep the break as clean as possible. So, okay. So that's what I have now. Now the next step, if you wanna modernize and get really tight sounding breaks is, I like to move each eighth note section so that it's quantized, but keeping the ghost notes intact, meaning I want to keep the ghost notes with their groove. So if I move into the 16th note view, you'll see that the ghost notes are a bit off the line, which means that there's a humanization to it. So we don't want to get rid of that humanization because that's what gives the beat the groove. So what I'm gonna do is, there's two ways to do this. You can move just the hi-hat here to the first line here, and now that's quantized, and then leave this here. Or you can move this as one. So you see this, th this, this as one piece so you move that together so that the relationship between the ghost note is still intact so there, there's two methods here either just move the eighth note and quantize that or select both hits and then move this you notice the great ghost note here is still a bit off which means that humanization is still preserved so we'll just c continue doing that here so I'm gonna select here Select the next eighth note, move this guy here, align that, just so it's nice and tight. Okay, so this is what we have now. And then I'll play it for you with the kick and snare. Okay, so it's sounding pretty good already. 
The next step is I'm going to go into the drum machine and double click the first slice and under the controls I'm going to pitch this break up a few notes so perhaps maybe three or four semitones and then right click and copy this value to siblings. Now what this does is that it copies the setting to all the other slices in my drum rack. So once I hit that, all the other slices will be pitched three semitones up as well. So let's hear what we got. All right, sounding great. And now another step which we've talked about in the previous videos is to adjust the sustain and decay to really tighten up that break. So the first step is to bring the sustain all the way to negative infinity and then adjust the decay accordingly. Notice the shorter decay, the more tighter the break. And it's really up to you. You play with it and try out and see what sounds good for you. All right, the next step is we're gonna pull EQ8 into our hot pants break. And then on the very first EQ, make sure it's set to a high pass. Either one of these will work. And then increase the frequency. I like anywhere at 220 hertz and up. That removes all the low rumble, but you can certainly move it higher. The higher you go, the more you isolate those shakers. I like it down there because we preserve those little ghost hits. And then we can bring up the highs around 6K. And then we can bring in the mids. And you notice I bring it all the way up to identify the frequency. Those shakers. And then we bring it down. Okay, now we're just gonna repeat this exercise for the think break. So I have a think break here. Again, it's an RX2 file, so I can just right click and slice to a new MIDI track that sends each slice to a MIDI clip here. And I'm just gonna solo it. Okay, again, I want to model this over the kick and snare pattern. So I'm just gonna get rid of this guy because uh, I don't really want the voice sample for now. You could keep it if you want, but for this application, I'm just gonna remove it. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to the eighth note view. And then I, just to simplify this, I'm gonna copy the snare over, but then I'm gonna remove it on the next step, just so you can hear what's happening. And then I'll also bring the kick over here. Okay, so we have a two-step break here now. Now, following the steps that we learned before, we're gonna replace the kick with a shaker. So that's the next eighth note up, which is slice three. So this one will also move to slice three. And then slice five will, all, will be changed to a shaker as well. So move it up. Okay, and then we can apply the methodology where we align the eighth notes. So select the eighth note sections. So that preserves the humanization. And then boom. Okay, and then we can go into the slice and go under controls for slice one. And let's try maybe three semitones again and then right click copy val the siblings okay and then we're going to go into eq8 under audio effects and just got solo the think break and just go remove those low frequencies so around 220 you can go higher if you want and really isolate those shakers and then bring up the highs if you want get it nice and crisp And then you can bring those high mids again, bringing up those ghost notes. Now let's hear it all together.
Now, one final step you can apply is to add some compression to really bring all those drums together. So I have a group here for the kick and snare. I can bring the hot pants and a sync over, just highlight the two and drag it over into the group here. And then I can double click under the group and then go into audio effects and perhaps bring my glue compressor over. And you might want to adjust the levels of the shakers. All right, sounding really tight. So this was without the compressor. So you notice with the glue compressor, it really brings the drums together, glues, glues it all together. All right, that's pretty much it. So I walked you through on how I slice my breaks, how I select certain pieces to really complement the rhythm that I have. And there's tons of rhythms you can do. In this one, I decided to do more of a liquid rolling two-step beat, but you can apply this principle to like halftime breaks, to jungle even, and perhaps we'll try that in a future video. But for now, I think it's a good place for you guys to try this out, really practice the concept of cutting up breaks and selecting the pieces that complement your kicks and snares. And if you have any questions or if there's anything else you want to learn in future videos, make sure you comment and let me know. And if this was helpful, like and subscribe. And until then, we'll see you at the next video.